let's go over this weekly menu web page, which is basically a big table. The first table row holds an image that stretches 100% of the width. The second table row has a save it, remove it, and keep it button that calls three different functions. Uh, we have table headers that go across the top with a background of tan. And you see breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. And then you have table headers over here along the left that give us days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And if I scroll down a little bit, you see Saturday. Each of these table data cells that finish off the rows uh, have text areas that you can type inside. So let's say cereal for breakfast. Let's say soup for lunch. Let's say cookies for a snack. And let's say meatloaf for dinner. When you click the Save It button and then you leave and then you open your menu3.html again, um, I'm going to run it in Firefox because I saved it in Firefox. If I would have saved it in Chrome, I would run it in Chrome because when you change browsers, it's only going to save it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to open it in whatever browser you saved it. If you save this in Firefox and open this page in Chrome, these will not be saved. So anyway, you see cereal, soup, cookies, and meatloaf across the top. You've got a remove it button that removes everything. So if you have this entire table filled up and you click the remove it, you're going to remove everything. If I wanted a button for each day, so that when you hit remove it, it only removes the day's worth, then I would have to do that. Each, each area here would have its own button so that you wouldn't save everything or uh, remove everything. The keep it button, basically, whatever's in here, the keep it button runs the save it function, plus it disables some stuff. So let me just put some garbage in here and then click keep it. All every single one of the text areas becomes disabled so you no longer can type anything anywhere these buttons above the save it and remove it are disabled so you can't click either of those either so the keep it keeps you from making a mistake and erasing anything but this is only the keep it only lasts as long as the browser's open it'll save what you typed but it won't keep these uh, elements disabled so let's go out of here run it again in Firefox and you see now you can type in here some more you could add on to it do any one you want and you could save that and go out of there run it in Firefox again and everything you typed is still in there now this right here is uh, indicating breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner menu items per, per week, but you could turn this weekly menu into anything. They could be, it could be an exercise weekly menu, and instead of breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner, you might have sit-ups, push-ups, curls, or whatever it is you want to do on an exercise routine. Um, whatever you want to make this chart for, all you've got to do is change these titles right here from breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner to whatever you want to make them. Um, all right, so let's just go over the page. I don't have any external files that I'm linking to. For instance, I have no external CSS sheet. I have the styles all in the head here in style tags. I have no external JavaScript. I just have all the functions and script tags in the head. So it's just a really big, long, single HTML file. There's opening HTML, there's the head, there's a title, it says weekly menu. If you look up here, the browser tab, it says weekly menu. I didn't even put a shortcut icon, a smiley face or anything up here, but you can do that on your own because other videos I showed you how to do that. Here's the style from line 4 to line 28. I don't believe I have an iframe here, so I don't know why I have that style in here, but if I have styles that I don't use, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you can style this the way you want to. You don't have to style it this way. I got a style for the body, style for the table, style for the table header and table data cell. And if you want to use these styles, and I'm going too fast, just pause the video. 
and if you type the styles you'll get the exact same output that I have except that you won't have this image you'll have to come up with your own image I made this image in paint and saved it as a oh what did I save it as PNG I think um, here's an exclusive style for the table header this is a shared style for the table header and the table data cell this is exclusively for just the table header. Again, I don't have an iframe. This must have been for something else that I created and I didn't get rid of the iframe. I have an uh, image style of a width of 100%. And this class Z doesn't seem to be working. And I don't know if it's a setting here or what. Let me change this to, I don't know. Let me take this negative symbol off and see what happens. Yeah, that's not really doing anything. So I'm not going to really dig into this. It's supposed to make the day of the week diagonal, but it's not working and I'm not going to worry about it right now. And I don't think I have anything with the idea of blank. Must have been something I used on another uh, on the page and then changed it. I do have text area, however. All of these that you type in are text areas. And I gave them a height of 85 pixels, a width of 150 pixels, and a resize of none. I am using buttons. These three green buttons have IDs of save button, remove button, and keep button. And they're all sharing this style background color of green, width of 100%, border 5 pixel, green outset. So that's the end of the CSS styles. Now let's Let's go over the different functions in the script tags. The scripts go from line 31 all the way to line 365. And I think I've got like four functions in here. The first function is called save my stuff. And this function is called when you click this button that says save it on it var value one equals document dot get element by id in parentheses and single quote sun one dot value that's one statement the second statement local storage dot set item key sun one in double quotes comma value one that's the second statement we're going to repeat this copy and paste this over and over again until we deal with every single one of these text areas in this table Sun 1 is going to refer to this box right here. I could just say Sun 1. This one is going to refer to this. I call it a box, but it's a text area. Sun 2. This will be Sun 3. And this will be Sun 4. This, because we're dealing with Monday, will be Mun 1. This one is Mun 2. This one is Mun 3. And this one is MUN4. So you get the gist there. <clears throat> I'll show you in the code of the body these IDs. Well, first let me finish this, and then I'll show you where these uh, IDs are. So again, all of this in Save My Stuff is going to be a copy and paste. We're going to have a new variable name. <clears throat> the second set is var value 2 equals document dot get element by ID sun 2 dot value. The next statement is local storage dot set item. We're giving it a key name, key sun 2 comma value 2. Var value 3 equals document dot get element by ID sun 3 dot value. Local storage dot set item, key sun 3 comma value 3 and so on and so forth. Each of these pairs of statements go all the way down. All, all eight of these statements are for Tuesday. All eight of these statements are for Wednesday. These are all for Thursday. These are all for Friday. And these are all for Saturday. So the, the very last text areas var value 25 equals document dot get element by ID set one dot value local storage dot set item key set one comma value 25 value 26 value 27 value 28 seven days of the week four meals per day four times seven is 28 so we have 28 variables value one all the way to value 28 and that's the end of save my stuff that's the end of the save it. 
function. The next one we have is function keep my stuff. The first thing that keep my stuff is going to do is it's going to repeat everything and save myself stuff. So it's going to call the save my stuff function right here. Save it's just the name of the function, save my stuff. And there's there was nothing in the parentheses in the original function. So there's going to be nothing in the parentheses here when you call it. Um so all of the lines of code, all of this is going to run just by calling it here. Then we're going to disable a bunch of stuff. Document dot get element by ID remove button dot disabled is true. So when you click keep it, it's going to run everything that save it runs, plus it's going to disable the remove button. It's going to disable the save button and it's going to disable each and every one of the text areas. Line 113, document docket element by ID sun one dot disabled is true. And we're going to repeat that for all of the text areas, sun one, sun two, sun three, sun four. <clears throat> we're going to copy and paste that whole thing here, but change sun one, sun two, sun three, sun four to mun one, mun two, mun three, mun four. We're going to copy and paste that whole chunk and change it to two one two three two one two 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 three two four and so on and so forth until we get every text area for every day of the week alright so that's how the keep my stuff function works now let's do the function remove my stuff remove my stuff is what the remove it buttons gonna call Document dot get element by ID sun one dot value equals and you just have an empty single quotes. Very simple. <clears throat> and we're gonna do that repeatedly over and over again, just by changing the um, ID. Sun one, sun two, sun three, sun four, copy and paste it here, mun one, mun two, mun three, mun four, copy and paste it, change the stuff in the paragraph until you get all the way to the Saturday and you set those values to nothing. <coughs> well, we also use local storage dot remove item for the key that we created as well. So we at 188 use local storage dot remove item key sun one local storage dot remove item key sun two key sun three key sun four and all of these are a copy and paste. Key mun one, key mun two, key mun three, key mun four. This one is going to remove any local storage for Tuesday. This one's going to remove any local storage for Wednesday. This is going to remove any local storage for Thursday, for Friday, <clears throat> and for Saturday. So that is the end of remove my stuff. Lastly, we have a function called load my stuff. And if we go down to the body, and right here, our body on line 368, body on load equals load my stuff. So as soon as we open this page, it's going to call the load my stuff function, which I'm getting ready to go over right now. Load my stuff is going to check and see if we've uh, typed anything in these text areas that we want to save. And if it does, then it's going to output that for us. Load my stuff. We're going to create new variables now, stored value 1, stored value 2, stored value 3, all the way to stored value 28. <clears throat> Where'd it go? All the way to <clears throat> stored value 28. But let's find the pattern that you're going to copy and paste. This is the pattern we're going to copy and paste. <coughs> var stored value 1 equals local storage dot get item key sun 1 and then you have an if stored value 1 so if something is stored by checking the get item key sun 1 if something is stored there that means if this is true then it's going to do this statement 230 document dot get element by ID the ID of sun 1 dot value, whatever the value that is there, it's going to go into the variable stored value. 
Okay. So you're going to copy and paste that over and over again and just change the new variable name from stored value 1 to stored value 2 and change your key item, the get item, the key, key sun to whatever you created the key to be. <clears throat> Check if this is true. And sun to would be the ID of the next text area. So var stored value two equals lo local storage dot get item key sun two. If stored value document dot get element by ID sun two dot value equals stored value two. The third one it's just nothing but a repeat. Var stored value three equals local storage dot get item key sun three. If stored value three document dot get element by ID sun three dot value equals stored value three. And you just keep copying and pasting those, paste these for as many text areas as you're using. Again, I'm using 28 because I'm using uh, 4 times 7, and that gives me 28 different text areas. <clears throat> so you see this on and on and on. Only thing that changes are names and keys. End of script, end of head. Here's our body tag that is actually on load equals load my stuff. Function I just read. Here's a table, and here's the first table row. <clears throat> In the first table row, we have a table header that has a call span of five, which means across here it goes all the way across the width of five rows. And inside that table header tag, you have an image. Image src equals menu heading.png. Again, I created this ping file in paint, and so I'm pulling it in here. End of table header, end of table row. Here's the second table row that goes with, that has the three buttons here, and it has breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. <clears throat> table header. Here's one button. Input type equals button. ID equals save button. Value equals save it. On click equals save my stuff. So you click the save button. It calls the save my stuff function. There's the next button. <coughs> Input type equals button. ID equals remove button. Value equals remove it. And on click equals remove my stuff. So you click the remove button and you call the remove my stuff function. There's the third button. Input type equals button ID equals keep button value equals keep it. On click equals keep my stuff. And we went over the keep my stuff function as well. There's the end of the table header, which is right here. And we have another table header that says breakfast, right here. Another table header that says lunch, table header that says snack, table header that says dinner, end of table row. <clears throat> Let's go to the third row. There's the third row. Table header. Div class equals Z. The word Sunday. End div end table header. I still don't understand why my class equals Z isn't working. Let me change the div to a span and see what happens out of curiosity. Let's see. Does that change anything? No, it actually doesn't. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. Now we have table data cell. Inside this table data cell right here, you have a text area with the ID of sun1 <clears throat> and nothing typed in here. The next TD, text area with an ID of sun2. The third TD, text area, ID of sun 3. The fourth TD has a text area of sun 4. And that's the end of that row. <clears throat> the next row does the same exact thing. Only difference is you see Monday here, and the text IDs <clears throat> correlate to Monday. So Mun 1, Mun 2, Mun 3, Mun 4. <coughs> you take that whole thing, and you copy and paste it here from the next table row for Tuesday. So now we're dealing with this row down here. Take that whole thing, copy and paste it down here, and change the names accordingly for Wednesday. Change the IDs for Wednesday. Create another table row, copy and paste all that stuff, and just change the name for Thursday and change the IDs for Thursday. Here's the table row for Friday. Here's the table row for Saturday, end table, end body, end HTML. 
And with that, that's the end of this program. Just remember that whatever you save in a particular browser, Firefox, <clears throat> when you come back, make sure you open it in Firefox. Or if you save it while you're in uh, Chrome, make sure you open it up in Chrome or you'll be shocked and wonder why your code's not working.